Well, event, events this week have been overshadowed by the murder of Christina Edkins, which you've probably all seen on the news. It's a terrible event, and uh, our thoughts and prayers of myself and the whole community have been with uh, Christina's family and friends. Uh, it was a terrible incident, and um, what I've done immediately following uh, the, the, the terrible events of uh, that morning I have been to meet with National Express to discuss with them issues to do with bus safety and um, bus security, uh, particularly looking at CCTV and what can be done with uh, new technologies such as smart water technology. And I also raised the important issue of the continuing use of knives and the possession of knives in our communities at Prime Minister's question time. Uh, arguing and putting it to the Prime Minister that we needed to go further than the mandatory sentence that we've already introduced for somebody that's caught uh, threatening someone with a knife, that we need to go further with the law on possession so that we can rid our communities of this scourge which took uh, an innocent life. And we want to do, uh, and I want to do everything I can to make sure that uh, no other family has to go through the pain that Christina's family is going through at the moment. I'm sure that the Prime Minister will wish to add his condolences to the family and friends of Christina Edkins, who was murdered on a bus to school in my constituency last Thursday morning. The Government has rightly introduced minimum custodial sentences for people convicted of threatening someone with a knife. But would the Prime Minister agree with me that it is time to introduce a legal assumption that people carrying a knife intend to use it and should attract a prison sentence so that we can redouble our efforts to rid our communities of the scourge of knives? Yeah. Yeah. Prime Minister. Well, I think my honourable friend speaks for the whole House and indeed the whole country for his ab the absolute revulsion at this really horrific crime. And the whole House, I know, will wish to join me in sending our sincere condolences to Christina Edkins' family. We do take knife crime extremely seriously. That is why, as he said, we've changed the law so that any adult who commits a crime with a knife can be expected to be sent to prison. And for a serious offence, they should expect a very long sentence. I will happily look at, at what he suggests, and I know that my right honourable friend, the Justice Secretary, is currently reviewing the powers available to the courts to deal with knife possession, and he'll bring forward proposals in due course. Uh, other things that have been happening this week is National Apprenticeship Week. Um, I've taken on my own apprentice in my office here in Hell's Own Page, who uh, is settling in, uh, doing a business and administration apprenticeship. And uh, we're working hard to prepare for our uh, apprenticeship fair, an apprenticeship fair that I'm going to be holding at the beginning of May. Um, and I'm um, looking forward to that. Um, next week, the big event, of, of course, is the, the budget. And uh, I've been calling upon George Osborne to uh, continue the work of taking as many basic rate taxpayers out of tax altogether. James Morris. Mr. Speaker, would the Chancellor agree with me that increasing the personal allowance again will mean that a basic rate taxpayer in my constituency will pay £600 less tax in cash terms as a result of the measures taken by this government? Yeah, yeah. Well, that, uh, that is already planned and announced, of course, last year, and it means coming in in April, people will be £600 a year better off, £50 a month, uh, and we've also taken 2 million people out of tax altogether, which is uh, just a sign of our commitment to those on low incomes, as well as, our, of course, our sign of our commitment to all those who work hard and want to get on. The increases that, that have been bought, uh, bought in to the personal allowance have meant that uh, around 3,000 people in Hale Zone and Raleigh Regis have been taken out of tax altogether, and around 30,000 people will be receiving lower tax bills as a result of the changes that have been brought in this April.